When I think about product market fit, um, you know, to me, it's, it's really, um, it's really, it's the degree to which your product satisfies a strong market demand, a strong market need. Is your product really the best for satisfying that need? Then, then you have product market fit most likely for those people. Um, is it a must have for those, for that target market once they try it? And so you may have just a single transaction product that, um, is not something that uh, they're going to come back and use a lot. And so this, this framework of must have might not work, but um, you might want to use something like a net promoter score in that case. Um, but I think for, for a lot of products, probably most of the products that the, of people who are on today, um, this idea that it's a must have after they try it is conceptually what we're trying to get to. And then just in the big picture of things, as I, as I talked about, it's, it's the first real milestone to building a successful product. And it's, um, I think it's probably the most difficult milestone as well. And so it's really important because if you don't have product market fit, growth is not sustainable if, if your product does not satisfy the need well. And you know, a lot of people you know, give me credit as the guy who came up or, or give me blame, depending on their perspective, the guy who came up with the term growth hacking. But if you ask me, like, growth hacking doesn't matter nearly as much to long-term growth as product market fit does. Growth hacking is just a way to build growth on top of product market fit. So product market fit is, is by far the most important part of growth. And there's a big study that uh, the Startup Genome pro Project did years ago that um, pointed to premature scaling. So essentially trying to scale a business that doesn't have product market fit is the number one cause of, of putting startups out of business. But it's not just a startup thing. Um, Clayton Christensen uh, it, you know, um, really well respected in the world of technology marketing and growth um, has a has a stat where he says ninety five percent of all new products fail. So that's not just startups; that's big companies and and everything in between. And so that high product failure is is really a lack of product market fit. And so um, a lot of really successful companies that we know today, the first versions of these products didn't have product market fit. So, you know, Instagram was a location solution called Bourbon. Uh, Pinterest was, was tote a kind of replacement for um, catalog shopping and, and WhatsApp was, was still in communications, but they were failing and they just happened to get lucky that um, before they pulled the plug on the business uh, push notifications got introduced to, uh, to, to iOS. And then suddenly suddenly their growth took off once pushing it. So, so their product market fit was the market changed and the product was happened to be in the right place. A great way to measure product market fit is with retention cohorts. So people can tell you they love your product, but if they stop using it, you don't have product market fit with those people. But this is for most types of online businesses. If it's, if it's a dating site, as we talked about, or um, you know, some, some other types of single transaction businesses, um, you're not going to have retention there. But for, for a lot of companies, the best measure of product market fit is people who try the product actually love the product. And what you can see with these uh, retention cohorts is that basically, you know, day one or month one, you're going to have 100% of the people um, that, that start this retention cohort using it. But over time, people are going to say, no, that's not what I thought it was. That's not what I thought it was. And, and they're going to give up on it. If it keeps going to zero after a certain period of time, then it wasn't a right fit for anyone. But hopefully at a certain point, you know, in this one around 60%, you get people who th that 60% sticks because it was meeting the need that they that they went out and tried to solve with here, um, which has become actually a pretty popular question a lot of people ask. But I, uh, I started asking about six months before I joined Dropbox and um, it, it became a really powerful question for me. And it's just asking users on the product, how would you feel if you could no longer use this product? And I was looking for people who said they would be very disappointed without the product. And so after I'd run the question across enough companies, I could see that essentially if companies were around 40%, they almost always hung in there and, and, and grew and, and turned into reasonably successful companies. And those that were quite a bit below 40% really stagnated and then, and then basically started to, uh, started to, to crash. And so um, Sean's asking, you know, disregard feedback from others. 
Um, I'll talk about a little exception there, but my, my inclination is to mostly disregard um, feedback from others that you, you want to double down on that super positive signal. When someone says it's a must have, I want to learn about those people. And so, um, so anyway, so that, this is really, um, you know, th this has been a powerful tool for me to hone in on that. And, and you can see here, it says leading indicator. The benefit of this is that I could go into a company on day one, if they don't have retention cohort tracking set up, you know, it may take me five months to know if they're retaining users. By the time they get it set up, by the time I see that data, but I could go in day one and say, you know, give me, give me a list of, of active people in the product. I want to send a survey out to them and I ask this question. I can know, okay, for, for those that are in the product and I'm doing like a random sample of people who have used the product at least a couple of times and hopefully used it within a pretty recent period, but I'm not just taking the most active people. It's a random sample of those people. Then it becomes a leading indicator and tells me if they say they'd be very disappointed without it, there's a good chance they're going to keep using it. But if I had to pick between the two, I would take what they actually do over what they say. But um, a lot of times I just didn't have that choice. So 